Hey guys, what's up? Uh, back with another video. Today we have a review. I have a review for you guys today. It is Kabam! We are going to do a review of the WWE Royal Rumble from 2013. There's a little bit of a spoiler cover right there. We got The Rock on the cover with the WWE Championship. We have a spoiler cover right there as he takes on CM Punk in the main event of this show. There's the spine right there. Some spoilers on the cover there. Uh, there's the um, the matches, the match, the four matches, and the uh, ex the, 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 the basically the chapters on the, the disc. You got, you know, you got. Anyway, let's kick it this off, shall we? Let's kick this immediate off with the first match of the evening, because that's how we usually start off with <laughs> silly Nathan. Um, anyway, we kicked off the Royal Rumble 2013 with the World Heavyweight Championship on the line in a last man standing match. As new as newly crowned world heavyweight champion Alberto Del Rio defended the, w, the the world heavyweight championship against the former champion, the man who he beat three weeks before this pay per view on SmackDown in a last man standing match, the Big Show. Uh, so yeah, you heard me right. Uh, Big Show lost the, the world heavyweight championship to Alberto Del Rio uh, on SmackDown three weeks before this pay per view. In a last man standing match, uh, this is Big Show's return, uh, return match, his, you know, his rematch, and he asked for a last man standing match. Uh, so back to back last man standing matches for Big Show and Alberto Del Rio. Don't know how I feel about that, it feels kind of lazy a little bit, but uh, the match itself can't call it anything but lazy. It was a really good, really good start to the show. Um, you know, it was very easy, very easy stuff there, you know, Big Show being the angry heel giant. And Alberto Del Rio, for once in his life, being actually actually becoming life actually being very likable uh, as a babyface. Um, I think Alberto played. I think Alberto and the Big Show played their roles very perfectly in this match. Um, most of the match, I've just realised. Most of the match, uh, towards the end, I did feel a bit so sorry for the Giant when uh, he got put in the cross arm breaker and. Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, Alberto Del Rio's manager, put uh, Big Show's, he duct taped Big Show's feet to the ropes so he couldn't escape. And, uh, of course, he had his arm worked on, so uh, it, it was very weird. It just looked like Big Show couldn't do a sit-up. Uh, <laughs> I felt sorry for the poor giant. You know, the, the 7 foot, 500 pound giant, the Big Show, struggling to, you know, you know Struggling to put where, struggling to get up, struggling to do a sit up so he could try to get his, all, his legs uh, freed from the duct tape. But the match itself was fun. It was a really fun way to start the Royal Rumble. Last Man Standing match, uh, you know, tables, you know, plenty of counts. And yeah, and now Burrow retains the World Heavyweight Championship with a little bit of scenery with duct tape. But uh, we'll move on to the next match. Good start to the Royal Rumble. Get good start to kick off. Next match, we had the Team Road Scholars of T uh, Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow taking on the Tag Team Champions, Team How No, in the Battle of the Teams. This was, uh, of course, K uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan, Team How No versus the Ro Team Road Scholars of Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow for the Tag Team title. Um, this was okay. Uh, felt like a, felt like a filler match because we only had four matches on the card. And uh, they needed time to fill for the Royal Rumble. Uh, it was okay match. It, nothing really that special. Nothing really I'd re remember in the next couple of days or so. But it was it was uh, okay. And uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan got got along. Um, the commentary team of Jerry Lawler, Michael Cole, and JBL were kind of getting a bit annoying after a while on the commentary. Uh, they kept bringing up Cody's mustache because Cody Rhodes had a mustache around that time, and they kept. Trying to refer to it as like, oh, wouldn't like, uh, they're trying to, they were naming like different people from like the 60s and the 70s who, uh, who kind of, who Cody Rhodes reminds them of, like Freddie Mercury and other people as well. And then it was like, and you know, the, the JBL was calling Dr. Shelby a quack because this is around the time where Team Howl No were going to anger management and all that stuff. So it was okay, a bit goofy with the commentators, but it was an okay match. Something you would probably see on Raw around that time. It was filler. Anyhow, Daniel Bryan and Kane retain. We move on to the next match. We have the next match. We have the Royal Rumble match itself. The 30-man Royal Rumble match. 
Uh, we started off with Chris Jericho and Dolph Ziggler, good, a good, um, a good callback to their feud in 2012, where Ziggler got rid of Chris Jericho for Monday Night Raw. Uh, yeah, uh, good start, good start to the Royal Rumble. We had appearances from The Godfather, which was was, was pretty fun. Uh, even though he didn't last that long, Dolph Ziggler eliminated him like ten, uh, two seconds or whatever it was. Uh, Gold Dust appeared in the Royal Rumble. Gold Dust made his return. And uh, teased the match with Cody Rhodes that we never really got fully in WWE, um, which was which, which was a shame. And uh, there was other stuff as well. John Cena came out number 19, uh, very predictable winner with him. It, it, it came down to him and Ryback. Um, him, John Cena, of course, winning the Royal Rumble. It was kind of predictable, but it was still a fun match. Uh, you know, years later, it was still a, a very fun ma- uh, contest. Very fun, very fun there. Roy Rumbles usually are fun. It's just a, you know, it's just a now with the kill. Like any, you know, as a, you know, it's been said before that you don't even have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy a Royal Rumble match. It's you know, it's basically like um, hot lava, lava, lava floor, or whatever it's called. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Uh, you know, just you know, over the top rope, both feet, both feet, both feet hit the floor. That's kind of it. Um, yeah, it's a very easy matchup. You know. Uh, as I said, you don't even have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy these kind of matches. Um, yeah, it's just fun. It was just a lot of fun. The Roman matches are always fun, apart from the very predictable ones. Um, this was very predictable, booking-wise, but the in-ring action was very good. That's what I meant by uh, a, a, good, a good match. This was very fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm losing my thoughts right now. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, it was very, it was good. Good stuff. Uh, John Cena came, came down to John Cena and Ryback, which was uh, a good a good uh, callback to um, uh, when John Cena moved aside and Ryback be, uh, got got the WWE title shot against CM Punk at Hell in the Cell back in October um, the previous year. But uh, you know uh, it came down to Ryback and Cena, and of course Cena would throw Ryback over the top rope, and uh, Cena would win the very predictable Royal Rumble to um, yeah. To go on to WrestleMania, kind of also making the main event very predictable as well, because you kind of knew where that was going to go. Speaking of the main event, let's get to it right now. Uh, Cena, we got The Rock taking on CM Punk for the WWE Championship. Um, as you can see right there, there's the, sp- the spoil on the cover of The Rock winning the WWE Championship. It had a big time feel to it. Uh, the match itself had a big time feel to it. Of course, it's The Rock, of course. Um, and it's like his third match since his return. He had the he had the Survivor Series 2011 match against the him and Cena against the Awesome Truth, and then you had the WrestleMania match against Cena. Uh, so yeah, this was like his third match in uh, since his return, and it was a good match, really enjoyable. Uh, had a big time feel to it, but unfortunately, I feel like it was let down a lot by the finish. Um, this came across as very over the top goofy shenanigans, uh, you know. So basically, what happened was uh, the Shield got involved. They put Rock through the table in the darkness, of course, so they couldn't so the so they couldn't see them because Vince McMahon had put a stipulation on the match where if CM Punk got if if the Shield got involved in uh, Punk's match, they would uh, he would disqualify he would strip Punk of the title. So Punk got around that by having the Shield interfere in the darkness. Um, Punk won. Punk pins Rock, and then of course Vince comes out and's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna strip you of the title. I'm gonna strip you of the title. You, you, you got. You think we're stupid? We know the Shield got involved." Yeah, blah, blah. And then of course the Rock got on the mic and he basically said like, "You know, we're not ending the night like that. I'm, I'm gonna be one that takes it from him, not you." Restart the match right now, and then Vince is like, "You heard the man, restart the match." And then they restart the match, and uh, Rock beats him in a couple about a couple of minutes after that. So it was an exciting moment, and it, you know, it's an exciting moment, especially if you're a Rock fan. But if you're like me, especially back in 2013, I was very angry when CM Punk lost the WWE Championship to the guy who doesn't wrestle that often in the Rock. Um, now, I, now in 2023, I, I still feel the same way. I'm not as angry as I was in 2013, obviously. But 
it just came across as very corny and over the top and very superhero like oh the superhero comes and you know comes out in the end and he you know he wins in the end and you know blah 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 oh you yeah, know the rock wins in the end the superhero um so yeah i wasn't really a big fan of that i feel like especially because they had a rematch uh, in february at the february pay-per-view elimination chamber uh and on the go home show for the elimination chamber Punk steals the title and then comes out with he's at the chamber and the Rock doesn't come out with it even though he's the champion. Um, and then Rock basically wins it back at the chamber. I feel like they should have just done... I feel like they should have had Punk just win here with the Shield involvement and then Rock gets his rematch at the chamber and then, you know, him and, him and Cena go on from there and then Punk goes on to face The Undertaker. But... I don't know, that, that's just my opinion. I, I just didn't like the ending with the over-the-topness of, like, Vince stri- threatening to strip Punk of the title. Because it also feels like it's a, fav- a bit of favoritism between, uh, to The Rock, you know what I mean? Because it's like Ryback, who was getting multiple titles at that opportunity around that time, he kept getting screwed by The Shield. Um, but there was nothing done about that. Like, you know what I mean? In storyline, there was nothing, like, Vince never came out and said, oh, if the Shield get involved in one of your matches, Ryback and Punk, then you're going to get stripped for the title. No, it was like, as soon as the Shield attacked The Rock, Vince was like, you know, like, superhero granddad, going like, rah, I'm coming to save the day, rah. <laughs> So yeah, um, it was a bit frustrating, very frustrating ending. But I, 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 it's a bit, it's a good moment. The Rock winning the title, I, I guess, I guess. But I just didn't feel like, I don't know. I, I just didn't like. I, I think it should have been, it could have been done a, a whole lot better. The ending was instead of having. To, I would have liked to see Rock just beat Punk straight up in a one-on-one match rather than, rather than the whole shenanigans with the Shield and then Vince threatening to strip Punk and then. Rock restarts the match because Rock ends up beating Punk anyway, clean as a whistle. But he just had the the the, the nonsense with Vince and the Shield. So anyway, that's that's my review of WWE Royal Rumble 2013. Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. It was a very still very enjoyable event with very historical circumstances. Uh, but yeah, very predictable Royal Rumble, but a very enjoyable one at the same time. Like I enjoyed the Del Rio match. The uh, the Royal Rumble match itself was a very fun hour, and uh, there were some fun spots in the Rumble with Jericho and Ziggler and all that stuff, and Goldust and Cody, and the Godfather. Uh, but yeah, it was very fun, and of course, the, the, this match had a big time feel to it with Rock and, with Rock and Punk, and uh, you know, but it was kind of obvious where it was going with Rock and Cena at WrestleMania, which kind of let down the mood a little bit. Anyhow, that's going to be it, gal guys. Tell me what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys next time. And I'm out.